Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Jesus, you look gorgeous. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for doing this. Damn, you don't even have a filter. You look so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hide. I'm going to sit back further. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Where are you right now? Are you in Los Angeles now? I'm in Las Vegas. You're still in Vegas. Okay. I thought you moved yes. to Los Angeles for some reason. I was supposed to move when we do the podcast, but everything's delayed. So oh. I'm stuck in Vegas right now. Okay. I want to get to that. Obviously, I want to know all about the podcast for sure. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So um, I definitely am someone who knew of you back in the day. Like I for sure knew you from uh, the Mariah Carey video, but I saw you on Oprah too. Like I definitely, that I was an Oprah watcher. I never missed an episode of Oprah. So um, I do, I did know of you, like when I came into this whole world of HIV and I saw you, I was like, I remember her. Oh my God. So of course I want to know how all of that happened anyways, because I really don't know the story, how you got involved and in all of that. But to start off, you were born with HIV. So that was, that's right. the beginning of all of this. You were born with it. So your mother had it, obviously. How old are you, by the way? I'm 37. So you were born in, uh, what year were you born? 84. 84. Okay. Oh, so you were born at the very beginning of when people were finding out about HIV. So right. it's kind of amazing that you're here because there was no treatment. Do they even know that you have HIV right away or no? No, when I was, um, so I was born HIV positive. My birth mother, um, she did IV drug using at the time and she was a prostitute and they took me away there's controversy if she left me or took me away, but I heard that I was taken away and my adopt my birth mother said I was um taken away, but I don't know what okay. the correct story is. But basically, um they took me away. I was born HIV positive, but they didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. So they placed me in a foster parents, um, my foster parents' house and they ended up adopting me. And then when I was at three years old, they called my adoptive parents up and asked them to get me tested. And they did, and I was infected. And so they had to test the whole family. And when the test came back that I was the only one infected, my mom was like, well, the doctors don't know what they're talking about. We're not changing anything. Cause I used to bathe in the water with my, um, my niece and of course you're three years old what do you do in the bathtub you pee sure. so there's times where i would pee in the tub and they didn't know and everyone was hiv negative and my mom was like okay i have to do more research i have to go to more conferences i have to see what's going on so that's what we did because they didn't know back then that it couldn't be transferred that way so they they assumed that you didn't right. have it so they didn't believe it because they thought well if you're in the bathtub peeing in there everyone else would have had it too but. Right. And I used to like give slobbery kisses, like, you know, when kids give, I'm like three years old, so I'm giving a kiss. So my drool would be all down people's face and they didn't know they treated me like a normal baby. So totally. And were you, did you have, um, so they wanted to have you tested. Was that because that you were sick? No. Um, so January 1st, a baby was born on New Year's Day and the mom came back, HIV. the mom, they tested the mom and the baby because they knew she had been in there having babies and whatnot. They knew she was an IV drug user. So they tested her and the test came back positive and they tested the baby, the baby came back positive. And that's when the state of Nevada called my adoptive parents up and said, hey, we need you to get tested. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I mean, you did get a positive test, but your adoptive mother didn't believe the results because you'd been around everybody. So she tried to go to conferences and find out more. And then did she finally obviously had to believe that it was true? Yeah, she knew that the virus was true. She never doubted um, because at that time we didn't have HIV. It was only AIDS at that time. And so when she found out that I was positive, she went to a conference and she found out about NIH, the National Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. And so that's um, that's where, um, what's his name? Anthony Farabi, is that his name? He was my doctor at one point in time. and. So like, it's cool that I see him watching the news talking about um, COVID, but he treated a lot of the HIV epidemics at the NIH. What, 
Fauci or somebody else? Yeah, Fauci. Get, he was your doctor? Yes, he was. Do you remember? Um, I remember seeing him. He was like, he's kind of shy to be around, but I think I would just go around and mess with him and say hi. And but he was another doctor with Dr. Pizzo. So they would all um whenever I got a bad um disease or infection because I had all these um diseases and infections and they you didn't know about it. So, Did you have yeah, AIDS at that point? So okay. I had opportunist infections back then and all that. So they would go in um they the doctors would come down to look at me and be like we don't understand how she's walking around with three t-cells and so they would be like they would just come in the room and just diagnose me and i'd be hooked up to ivs and stuff so do you remember being time. feeling really sick at that time no i um i know i felt better than what i used to feel better because you know um i suffer from fatigue a lot um, so I, I suffered from depression a lot, but I remember just when the medicine started working, we took all the medicine. I remember, I don't want to take these pills anymore. I don't want to do this, um, take this pill anymore. And, um, that's why I stopped going to NIH because I was just tired of their protocol. Okay. And when you, so you were about how old at that time when you were going there and you had three T cells, how old were you then? Oh, four. Oh my god and you were able to take a damn pill when you were four yeah and then you Impressive. see all these um scars i have these are all the hickmans and porter casts i used to have oh my god so a lot of times some of the medicines were too harsh for me to swallow so they would give me an iv pill or oh an iv god. medication so you had like a like a pick line yeah i had a pick okay. line a porter calf a oh hickman whatever you want to call it oh my gosh okay so what were your opportunistic infections which ones did you have um i know i had a brain now don't give me i don't know the names and words but i know i had a brain infection i had a blood infection it took forever to clear up wow. um and a lot of times I have sinus, I have really bad sinuses. So I would get opportunists, um, I would get different sinus infections and uh -huh. they would have to clean up and they would have to treat. Um, so I don't remember exactly what the names are called, but I just remember it was a, um, I just had opportunist infection. Did your mom learn through going to NIH that um, they didn't need to worry about being around you that you weren't gonna give it to anybody? Did she learn that? <laughs> I think she learned that the first couple years. Um, they didn't like, I don't remember them using gloves when they changed my pad. Well, when they changed my pads, of course, my Hickman. But like, yeah. if I got a cut or something, they were like, oh, let's go like wipe it off in the faucet. Like, you'll be okay. So uh -huh. they didn't, they weren't over, they didn't overextend themselves to like make sure I was safe and they weren't, that everything was okay. Right. I'm assuming that they did not think that you would survive. No, Maybe. that's why I, because, okay, so I was diagnosed at three years old. The doctor said I wouldn't live past five. And I think that's why my birthdays are so extravagant. We always do big things because every year it was a blessing to see another year. And it was a birthday they said that I, that I couldn't have. Wow. Oh my God. Hi, Dia. Did you know that that was actually the case? Or were you aware of that? that it was I think in some instances growing up, um, cause you friends pass away or whatnot and they were presumed that I was going to die. It wasn't presumed that I was going to live. So right. every year is like, Oh, she made it another year. My schooling wasn't on tack. I didn't receive proper schooling because um, they were trying to keep me alive. And then when I graduated high school, I was like, okay, like, what do I do? I couldn't join the military. Um, so it was crazy. Oh my God. Okay, so this just went on for all through high school, just every single year, because by the time you were in high school, that had to be like, what? 2000 around there i graduated in 2004 so i graduated a little late but that's okay, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. And so you were, um, I'm assuming at that point, you were taking something every single day. Like there had to be, there was some kind of treatment that was sort of working. But at, at that time, um, because we knew that was U equals U before there was actually U equals U. Did so you? <laughs> I was going to ask you when you knew. When did you know? Oh my God. Okay, tell me. Well, okay, let me just finish. I think that life was they didn't expect me to live so every day was like and i'm a gemini anyway so every day was like a party so i always have boyfriends or whatnot um i um i was sexually active i turned sexually active at 15 because there was so much pressure like you can't have sex you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that and i was like but there's a life outside of hiv aids like how do i live my life and so it was very obvious to me just being in that situation and having relationships and all my boyfriends would be HIV negative that you equals you was around before we had all the data so I'm just happy that we have you equals you um I'm excited about it and I don't know I just I figured when I was like 20 about you equals you did the guys like know? You're on your medicine and I think they all my boyfriends were fine so they like knew you were HIV positive did you and you're like how did you know like I would assume because I know like Brenda Emily who was also born with it I think she's about 25 now she said that she always was fearful of her body she was scared of giving this to somebody so she didn't have that information for some reason and so she would keep people away from her because she was so afraid that she would transmit it sexually but you oh no you I want all the boys I want <laughs> all the boys <laughs> bring me the boys um, <laughs> I think think that just being precautious, like, um, I don't know if there's too much information, but I don't personally like to be eaten out. That's just not my thing. So I think that gave a little bit of precaution. I know you can't get it from eating out. I know you can't. But that gave a little precaution for the boys because they was like, okay, we don't have to perform that. And, you know, I just, I did everything I can do. I don't know. Wait, oh, so like going down on you, they were like, they knew that that was fine. Yeah. Okay. No, but I didn't like to, I didn't like for them to go down on me. Got it. So I okay. Like to be eating out. So oh, I got it. Okay. I would give them uh, extra precaution, like, okay, we don't have to do that. But you know, nowadays you can be eating out. It's not a problem. No, well, there's no, I just don't try it. There's no female to female transmission. So like what do, they do? what do women do? I mean, obviously, but yeah. But yeah, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Not every girl likes that. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> it all depends. It has to, it's the partner and the trust and all that. I'm not all that crazy about that either. Um, but yeah, it's not too much information because people obviously have questions for sure. So none of the guys use condoms then. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm 37 with no kids, so I did use condoms because I just didn't, I just financially, I wasn't where I wanted to be, uh -huh. and I think that I never had a guy, um, I mean, there are guys now that would ask me to be my baby daddy, but I'm just like, no, it's okay, because I'm just financially not where I wanted to be, and that's been my whole life. Um, I've been pregnant twice. Um, okay. My, um, my boyfriend, well, my ex-boyfriend, he just passed away. He, um, he was hit by a car. Oh he was hit by a drunk driver. But we were together for like 10 years and I thought we were going to get married. Um, we didn't. So like I had miscarriage and stuff, but like I've been pregnant before, but like now it's like, I have my mind, like I'm not ready to be pregnant. So I just don't, I just, I always use condoms. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So they weren't going to get it obviously through condoms. God damn, I didn't know that that happened to you. When, when did that happen to him? Um, like this month, like, no, like last month, I think we buried him in December. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, yes. Dang, I didn't know that. So you guys have been together for 10 years? Yeah, it was like, we. he's been in my life for 15, but we were together for like 10 years. And then two years before we broke up, we were, we had broken up two years and then he had passed away. Oh my God. Oh my God. And so obviously he doesn't, he doesn't have, a, he didn't have HIV, obviously. No, he didn't have HIV. And he okay. would go with me to all my conferences. He would speak about um, staying safe because he's like, 
he's like yeah, he's like um a gangbanger like not a gangbanger but he's like a hood nigga and so he would be like he worked on cars he he like had a auto body shop and when guys would rag on him he was like at least i know what my girl has what does your girl have and she's messing with this many dudes or this many dudes um so he was he did an interview with me he did so he taught me how to have a relationship and how to be open and i just don't think i found anyone willing to like stick by me in that instance well so. okay so he accepted you obviously for your hiv but he also accepted your advocacy because that's a whole yes, other thing right that's a whole other thing like that's hard to accept like yep. i don't know that's what i'm finding it's yeah it's one thing to say yeah it's fine i'll sleep with you but also what comes with us is like talking about it all the time publicly and that's not so easy for everybody so but he was obviously fine with that yeah he was fine i Dang. loved him for that Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So have you been um dating? I know that you were on Love Don't Judge. And that was yes, you know to put you on I'm me too. Mine's been pulled because my ex didn't want it up anymore. So he actually contacted them and made them take it down. I know. I'm sorry. So, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. But, but didn't anyways, he sign a contract um, to do it? What was that? Didn't he sign a contract to do it? Yeah, but it had already been a year, so he was able to contact oh, okay, them, and okay. they just said, fine. They didn't even say anything to me. They just took it down, which I was like, it's fine. We're not together, but it was like, I was proud of the video. I really liked it, but it's, you know, I'm in a different time right now, and we're not together, so it's okay, but um, what did you think of that experience? I thought and, uh, it was fun. Um, I wish I had given more detail of what I liked, because I was just like... <laughs> I was kind of like whatever the place and I didn't I don't know I was expecting me to find my future husband or whatever not my future husband for a potential boyfriend but he just right. wasn't my cup of tea like I'm well, wishing well he's succeeding he has like his podcast he's like oh, at the radio yeah. stadium so like he's exceeding but it just he just wasn't my well, it was so say. it was a blind date setup. They set you up, and you were going to basically tell this blind date that you had HIV. And um, but I, he was a white guy, and I watched that, and I was like, I don't. Does she date white guys? Like that? Weren't you like? I know. How did they get that so wrong? I mean, what, I don't understand that because someone <laughs> said whatever they'll hook you. They said you have to be particular with what you say because they sometimes will have you date the opposite. And I was like, okay, well, he just wasn't, I don't know how to explain that, but we said, like, um, someone African-American or, like, I don't know. You were so just, nice to him, though. I have to say, if he wasn't your type, it didn't come across at all. You weren't like, oh, wow, that was not what I was, you didn't at all. Like, it didn't show. So you were super kind about the whole thing. And um, it was really you. fun to watch. What's, what is the name of it? Is it just Love, Don't Judge? And then it's, is there more it's, to it? Um, I put, I don't know, on YouTube, I put Truly Hydea. So it always pops mm -hmm. up for me. Yeah. Um, so it's like, um, Love, Don't Judge, I'm HIV positive. That's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I show that clip all the time to my, like, I am dating. So I show that clip to my future partners, and I'll let them know, like, hey, this is me. This is what I do. I'm kind of famous for it, so I have to let you know. And yeah. it's been good. I've had positive reactions, mixed reactions. I have guys that be like, I don't care. I'll still sleep with you. And then some guys are like, no, not today. Um, but they come around later on and I'll be like, okay, whatever. In general, don't you think it's, I, for me, it's been fine. I'm just, I'm curious though. In general, our, it sounds like most guys are pretty accepting. I think most guys are accepting. I wish that we would have the conversation more in the African American community, mm -hmm. because what I've noticed in a lot of people are like, can I get it from kissing? Can I get it from this? And I'm just like, um, there's millennials seem to be lacking in it like i'm 37 but um when i talk about my status it seems like they're lacking the information that they need and i just don't know how to get it out there more i know we have um commercials that go on um because i have pluto and mm -hmm. there are commercials that come on about hiv aids and i was like hey 
do you have you been tested or do you what do you think about this disease and so that was helpful so i just don't understand how we get it to millennials to have them be more converse about the disease because the basics they're missing yeah. the basics yeah it's like they don't learn it in school they don't cover it like my son's a freshman right now in health and I keep waiting for the day when they're going to talk about HIV. I want to see how much they say and what his health teacher actually presents to them. Because that is the only thing, obviously, he knows about it because of me. But that's the, if, if I didn't have it, I want, you know, I'm curious to know how much you would just learn in school, which I don't think is much at all. So what do we rely on? We rely on the internet now and, you know, large networks, which they do show commercials now. And they do say, they don't say U equals U. But they do say that you can inf you effectively won't transmit the virus. So they do say that when you're on treatment. I'm noticing more and more commercials for um, ARVs. They will say that, but they don't say you equals you. I don't know if that's like a trademark or they can't or what the deal is. I have no idea. I need to ask the campaign because you know I'm part of it. Like, what is why? I don't know if it's like because there's some doctors that will say. Um, that's nice in theory, talking about you equals you. So it's like. So is it like the drug companies have something against it or is it like, like you said, the trademark, I have no idea what's going on. It's weird. Like, like the doctors have some doubt. Yeah. That's some doctors have doubt. I don't know, I know. but I, I just know. trust the scientists and that's all I can do. Um, yeah. even though sometimes I get it wrong cause I didn't die at five. Right. Um, so yeah i i trust the science too i i went to aids 2018 in amsterdam where i we haven't met at a conference but were you there no, and i just missed haven't. you no, Have you no been i haven't been going to the conferences because um for one i don't want to do the paperwork um <laughs> but two i'm not part with an organization so they don't bring me out and like when i worked with ahf sometimes they would go to different conferences that they would bring me out but i'm so ever since corona hit and well well covid hit i've been so isolated into myself mm -hmm. i was already um what's it called uh i didn't go around a lot of people so i was antisocial. Okay. but it's like but it's a form like i am um, i stay inside but i have like an exterior personality but I don't know what's gonna happen this next year. So yeah, they, well, they haven't even been happening. They've been online. So I haven't been to one since 2018. That was the last one okay. that was um, in Florida, I think. So yeah, and then the one that was supposed to happen in San Francisco, but then it changed to New, I think somewhere in Mexico. Anyways, then that didn't happen because of COVID. So yeah, they were. That's right. They were gonna do it in San Francisco. AIDS 2000. 20 i think but then they canceled it because people couldn't get in because trump was president and there was like issues with people coming in so oh, yeah, that yeah. Whole thing fell apart so there really hasn't been anything but okay so we going back to like when you were a kid how did you what happened first mariah carey video or oprah which one was first oprah did was it oprah i can't remember the time frames i don't know because i I don't oh, know. Okay, it have to be after the 1990 Essence Award because that's when I won my award and I met her. And then she included me in her video. So Oprah was 1996. That was the then, Essence Award. Is that what you said? Yeah. And what was what the award for? Career. What was the name um, of the award? Just advocating, just um, letting people know, helping reach uh, generations. Because at that time, I was like one of the only African American kids really speaking out on a high like I was it was like Ryan White and then me um so they were just giving my my flowers while I was alive and just How saying old were you? um 1999 help me I can't do the math right now <laughs> you were born in 84 so like 15 around there 14 yeah 18? I was yeah because that's when I yeah because so yeah you knew Ryan. You'd met Ryan. Yeah, I had met Ryan. We are friends. Like, um, his mom's on my. She's my Facebook friend. Me too. So. I yeah, I'm friends with yeah. her on Facebook too. The trip, dude, that trips me out. Well, it trips me out that I'm in contact with you too, because like I knew you, like I saw you on Oprah, and I I remember, I totally remember Ryan White. I kept like, um, from my teenage years, I kept like five people magazines and one was like when you two the group you two was on the cover for joshua tree when the shuttle explosion happened 
um, when baby Jessica found, fell down the well, Ryan White, those were like these, I kept like five magazines. I've had them in like a bin forever. Never in a million years did I think that I'd end up with HIV. And I followed that kid because I was so blown away by what he'd done. And so it's a crazy to know that you knew him. Damn. Yes. Oh, you must have been devastated when he passed away. My God. I was sad. I was sad when he passed away. I was sad when um, Elizabeth Glazier passed away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Those those devs they were i was close to those individuals and it's like yeah. elizabeth blazer i knew that like during my speaking and whatnot and i knew that she would always be a source of kim like i can always help her and like hey i have these questions about this conference should i do it or she helped me get on magic johnson when i did magic johnson on nickelodeon so oh. like she was like somewhat of a guardian angel that's amazing. Yeah. So for people who don't know, she got it through a blood transfusion, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And she um, passed it to her daughter unknowingly through birth. And then her daughter also passed away at like what, maybe eight or nine? Yeah. She was young. Like, yeah. I want to say eight. Okay. And then Jake, her son was also born HIV positive again, unknowingly, but he's alive and well today. Right? Yes, he is. Yeah. And super, super handsome. I mean, I think he's really hot, but um, yeah, cute boy. And um, their dad is actually a famous actor. I can't think of his name offhand, but he was um, he was on Star Starsky and Hutch, which is a show um, I knew. It's like Paul something, Paul, Paul Michael Glazer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And interestingly enough, of course, he's not HIV positive. So people, yeah. I've, it's funny because people say to me, because I, you know, female transmission is really low risk. It's, it's just, it is because of our anatomy and people, I know people have written in my comments on my videos. Well, he probably has that special um, gene from the European men with like 2%. No. Wow, he just, you know, it wasn't high risk because of our anatomy and how men are built. They're, you know, penises, all skin, that's protective. So anyway. Because someone, when someone was talking to me, they're like, we are the receivers, men are the givers. So yeah. that's kind of how it is with our anatomy because we're just having like regular sex. Right. Um, we will absorb all your fluids and that's why our STD rates and STI rates are so high is Definitely. because we receive all the fluids that you give us. So. Yeah, like I've always said, I said, we have two holes, men have one. And that's, you know, it's typically the receiver that is at high risk. I mean, it just, and it all makes sense when you think about it. But it's amazing how many hetero men are have HIV anxiety and I just don't even get it because you just look at the statistics and you can see how low risk it is for them but you know I, I don't know. know it's hard it's hard out here for a single girl trust me I know <laughs> yeah totally get that okay so you do you get the essence award so your face is getting out there so that I guess being involved with Fauci must have kind of sort of brought you into these places and speaking and you're all of a sudden becoming an advocate right yeah, well, what happened was I made a video back in the day with um, three kids that went to the hospital, and I was just playing April O'Neil, um, and I was interviewing them questions about having AIDS or what it was like um, taking their medicine or how it would be like if people were like, um, discriminate against you. And my social worker actually got the video and was taping it and somehow the conference somehow it went from um caseworkers to doctors and it went to production companies so that's why i think i got doing um all the talk shows that i was on and just having that um instrumental or that that video about how to teach kids who are hiv positive how to live a normal life or what they can conceived out of normal life at that time. You must have felt this amazing, um, I don't know, I just think like you must have known like what you were providing to the public by being public about it because you are definitely dealing with your own health at the same time and yet you're putting your face out there, you're talking about it, you know it's helping people, you're trying, you must have known there was stigma and you're obviously helping fight it because you're a child with it. So did, how much like did you comprehend the stigma at the time? I think I was pretty 
shield from stigma. I didn't, my mom kind of protected me from that. My mom and my brother, because he worked with me at the time. Mm -hmm. And so. Adoptive brother, right? Yeah, adoptive okay. brother. So mm -hmm. um, I was just caught off guard. And I think, I no, I wasn't caught off guard. They protected me from the shield. Like if anyone, because I would pick my IV at the time, I would change my med on the plane. And if someone got up and left, we didn't know why they left. Because, you know, I would be like, yeah, I'm HIV positive. And I'd be messing with my pump and they would leave. And my mom said, oh, we have extra room. Like we can lay out now. <laughs> she never hinted that there was ever a problem with me. And she was kind of very combative. She's not combative, but... She she was apprehensive of our child she would like protect at all costs and so i'm grateful for my mom to and she's do still that. here your mom's still yeah, here she is. Uh, where does she live yeah, she, is. she lives like 15 minutes away from me oh nice okay and is there a dad too yeah i have a dad he um he lives like 20 minutes away from me so they're still a part of my life um, you know i call my dad every now and then when i need some money have you nice hey, dad. <laughs> And so your your birth mother, do you know what came of her? Have you ever met her? They passed away. Both my biological parents passed away. They did. Okay. And when did you find out about that? Like right when it happened or? Um, no, I found out about it later on because I met my siblings when I was like 11 or so. Yeah, and my the siblings. Younger. Yeah. So I grew up with them. So I know and like my older sister, she lives with me today. She's my biological sister. Oh. And so I'm very close with all of them. Are they, okay, are any of them not HIV positive? Um, yeah, the older sets are not HIV positive, And then the younger sets, I don't say their names because they're mm -hmm. not as public as me. So mm -hmm. some of them are infected. Okay, yeah, like I, what I learned from Brenda Emily, if you know Brenda, um, she told, so she has a twin brother and they were both born vaginally. She got it, but he didn't. Um, and she ended up getting, um, oh gosh, cerebral palsy because of getting HIV as a newborn infant. Um, so anyways, what she told me is that it really happens through the birthing process. It's not, it, it's not when you're in utero, so to speak. I know it can happen that way. I know a woman whose baby got it in utero because the placenta, there was a breakage. And so there was blood in the womb, but for the most part, it happens through the birth, birth like the birth canal, right? Is right. that what you're being told? Okay. So some babies get lucky if the mom has HIV, but today, obviously we know we get tested um, when we're pregnant, I got tested with all three of my kids, but still some women contract HIV when they're pregnant and don't even know it. And they find out further into their pregnancy or they don't know and they could transmit it. So it's still possible to transmit through pregnancy. But in general, people should know that when you're on treatment, it doesn't happen. You won't transmit it. So that's why um, when I do my speeches, I always say if you're thinking about getting pregnant or in the process of getting pregnant, make sure you take an HIV test because the HIV test is not something that you're a guarantee. It's, mm -hmm. um, doctors are very rigid about that. Uh, rather, if you're like, um, some doctors give all babies, um, from what I've heard, um, give all pregnant women an HIV test. Right. But from what I was hearing, some women don't get HIV tests. Really? Yeah. I had them with all three, and I don't even recall if there was a question, like if they told me they were going to do it or if it was, just, it was just done. I just know that it was done with all three of mine. But okay. I can't remember if they'd asked me or not. I think it was just like protocol like you're pregnant you have an hiv test but again some women contract hiv unless, the unless they change the um unless they change the features on it i don't know you would like children someday i would like children hopefully by the time i'm 40 if not by 40 it's over it's a wrap <laughs> is that how you feel yes yeah. that's i've been crying so much i have been used <laughs> to crying you got me crying <laughs> Oh, uh, it's amazing. Like it's, it really is like, I'm so surprised that it's like, it still hits you. Like it's that fresh that you still have those emotions from feeling like you could have died and celebrating each birthday. It's amazing. Like you have obviously lived with this your whole life, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's like, it's very, um, 
it's sweet. It's really nice to see that there's still all of that there. It's not like this hard exterior, like, yeah, I'm fine, whatever. No, this is like, this has affected you your whole damn life, you know? Okay, so I wanted to ask you, uh, well, what was it like meeting Oprah? And by the way, I met Oprah. I was in her audience um, a long time ago. It was, you know, when Oprah got real, real tiny? Like yeah, got, I remember that. I, I met her then. My girlfriend was getting married in Chicago and she surprised me with tickets to Oprah. And, you know, I'm real tall. My friend is like six feet tall. My It's a girl. And uh, at the very end, we all get to get to a line in the um, studio and walk up and meet her. And so I got to shake her hand and I just remember saying, oh my God, you're so tiny. It was really, she was, she, and she's not that tall either. Um, but she was so gracious and super nice. And I just, it was just a, you know, a really quick moment, but I get to say that I did meet Oprah for a split second. So yeah, Oprah. I'm happy you did. How, okay. So how was it being, do you remember being on the show? Um, I remember being on the show, maybe clips from it, but I remember we did the Angelique story. It was Angelique's story. Um, so we were talking about Camp Heartland. So we were talking about the um, camp that allows kids that are HIV positive come, their siblings or whatnot. Um, and so it was me, Angelique, and somebody else, I don't remember the third person, and the whole... I don't know. I guess I had been on the show so long or doing my activism work. I guess Oprah was really familiar with her. So we went on the audience. She asked me my questions. Of course, people cried. And yeah. then she took me backstage. Um, she, she gave me an All-American doll. I remember oh. that. <laughs> so. Did it match your skin color? Did they have those then? I don't remember. I think it was darker than me. Oh, okay. But they but did she was have. Still physical. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. So you do remember. And you were probably like, I feel like you were around and not. She tried to not. give me. I think so. Um, yeah. Because I was. It was after the. Yeah, I was around nine, I think. Uh -huh. And I'm... um, she gave me. She tried to give me a $2 bill. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I have some of those. It's okay. I don't need any of that. Because I was young. My mom wasn't in the room with me. So I was like, I don't need that. I, I have my own $2 bills. <laughs> You're like, I'll just take so the doll. I was, I was, I'll just take the doll. <laughs> You're right. And okay, so then uh, what was Mariah Carey? Like, I've never asked you that. I'm so curious to know how she was. Or did you get to meet her? Were you guys in, like, the room at the same time? Yeah, I met her. She, um... She did her, she, I met her at an award show because we were right on awards and I just walked up to her and I was like, I'm Idea. do you remember me? And she was like, yeah, because we didn't meet her. I didn't meet her at the Essence Awards because she had to go and they wouldn't let us leave our, um, they wouldn't let us leave our seats. And so in Vegas, I asked her manager, I like, um, I Google all the names of the different celebrities so I find out their managers. So I was like, hey, um, my name is Hydea Brabin. I never um, met Mariah. I would like to meet her, her, see her residency. So she gave me like three tickets and me and my sister and my mom went and it was cool. Oh she my was God. nice. She was, oh, so she wasn't a, she's not going to be a diva. Yeah. I can't remember the video. What was the name of the song? That you you can't take that away from me. Okay, and were you guys in the video at the same time, or was it footage that you they filmed of no, you at a different time? It was, it was her, and she was like laying on a bed, but she was looking at all these because she had like Lance Armstrong there and a couple kids. Um, basically, if you overcame something, she kind of had you in the video. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it's okay. kind of like you can't take that away from me. Did they pay you for that? No, they didn't pay me. Maybe my mom got something, but I didn't I didn't receive anything. So like um so you're gonna read about it in my book. Oh good. Um there was some financial struggle that we had to entail and um it got to a point where some of the money they had to um dissect to make a trust fund for me because the foundation and all they weren't running my money right. I didn't receive any money. So it's like, 
you know how I don't want to say um I don't know I didn't it was like I don't know. I don't want to call it. Um, there were just money problems. That's all I can say. So it was money for like speaking. You'd be speaking. Mm -hmm. Is that where the money would come? Okay, yeah. but you weren't receiving all of it. Exactly. It sounds like um, I don't know. It just reminds me of like the boy bands and how they just got like you know boys to men and like I watched all these do documentaries on the boy bands exactly. and how they like they got like nothing. They like you know go on tour for like a year or two years and like they get a check for ten thousand dollars after two years. They're like that's it. The I, I was reading something online i did um i was like let me see what my network is like so they said i made up a million dollars i was like who has that money where is it at because it ain't over here wow oh my god that's frustrating are you still speaking do you still do speaking engagements um i'm gonna do speaking engagements this year hopefully um hopefully the world will open back up or we'll yeah. have speaking engagements but i would say that kind of like covid19 kind of wiped me out totally totally yeah. kind of like kept you isolated and stuff do you do yeah. anything on do you well you know we do interviews like this online everybody's doing that but um so you've been mainly just doing online interviews yeah, I I think I'm going to do a master class or something. I don't know. Online. So, yes. And what would be you would be teaching? I would be teaching um I don't know. That's why I have to have that's why I have to talk to my manager and see what we yeah. can do. Okay, so what you have a podcast coming up. I know I saw that on your Instagram, but now it's been a little bit delayed, but where what is tell me all about that? It's going to be Overcoming with Hydea, where we have guests and I interview. Um, I really wanted to talk about more about sex, about how to enjoy sex, pleasure sex, mm -hmm. because a lot of women I'm finding are not, they're not dating. They're mm -hmm. not going after what they want because there's still this dispel mouth in their head that they can't acquire love or they can't acquire some things. So... Mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk about like what's life with like HIV, but it's not going to be all about HIV because I want to talk about debt free. Like how do you get out of debt? How are ways you can make money? Um, I just wanted to be an experience that people grow with me. So it'll be overcoming nice. with idea. So basically we'll have people who have overcome something, have overcame whatever they had to overcome to get where they are. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. And I'm when will, you said it got delayed, but do you know when about it might start? I'm hoping we're going to film something by February 7th, National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Okay, and then, so you say film it, so will, will it be also video, or is it going to be? Yeah, it'll be video, and then I'll hook it up to my um, YouTube page, and then I got to talk to my manager about having a podcast system, like how people download it, so... Yeah, okay. Will you have to do any of the uh, editing or do you have somebody that'll handle no, that? No, I have somebody doing that. Girl, you're so lucky. I don't even have a manager. This is hard stuff. It's a lot of stuff. So God, that's awesome if you don't have to do any of that part of it. So kudos to you. Well, I'm, I'll be watching for it for sure. And I'll definitely um, obviously put it as one of my favorites once it comes up because I want to I wanna hear. I love, I Thank definitely you. like hearing about uh, sex talk. That's fun. Definitely. <laughs> and ways to make money. Yeah, for sure. Because we do a lot of this stuff, you know, for free, obviously. I mean, so much of it is for free and it's really a lot of it's time consuming, but um, we do it because we want people to understand what it is today. You know, it's really important. I know it's like, we want people to learn and we want to give them the knowledge, but like, it's like the way that the industry works, it's almost like they don't want to pay you anything. I know. So you have to um, like... I don't know. I don't. It's oh, just, believe me. <laughs> it's too much politics. I've been really frustrated at times for how much I've been asked to participate in or do, and there's no money. It's like, really? Yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, we're we are the people battling this disease. We are the ones that are going through this, this, this hellhole. Like, you can't even make sure our light is paid. You can't even give us, like, gas money yeah. so it, it makes me hard into the industry um yeah. and that's why like on my instagram page i'm just like freely being myself not 
focus on so much of the work because I did it for 37 years. So mm -hmm. let me live my life. And it's just like the point that there's like no money to make. It's crazy to me. It is. I kind of learned that early on. It was like, yeah, there's nothing in this. I mean, some things are given for free. I was able to get into conferences for free because I was there as a um, social media scholar. I was there basically interviewing people. So I got scholarships. But um, no money, you know, but I was working, I was literally working every day, but there's no money. So you get a free airplane ticket, hotel, entrance in, but once you're there, you're working, you know, it's not like you get, you know, free food and stuff, but there's no, there's no paycheck. Yeah, it's, I know. it's a lot of, it's a lot of work for sure. And I would sometimes be scratching my head going, damn, like I'm losing a whole week of work right now. My actual work, you know, as, as a teacher, but it's an opportunity. So I should take it. I mean, it is good. It's good to like, you know, meet people who are advocating and, you know, obviously it's good to network with the whole community and all that. But yeah, it was, I definitely feel you there because I, you know, yeah, like mostly everything I do is for free. And I, I mean, I make a little bit of money on YouTube and a little bit on um, now TikTok and a little bit on Instagram, but it's nothing that like I can pay my freaking rent with, you know, it's like, right. it's, it's like extra money. Like my kids, we, you know, food or whatever, but it's nothing crazy. Like, I want to see the thousands, like where's that money, you know, not hundred, a little hundred here. Yeah. There. We're, oh yeah. You said you were starting a new job tomorrow. What is that? Oh yeah. I work at, I'm working at a front desk at a hotel. It's nothing major. It's just like, um, I just had to reorganize and work with some of the because I didn't know about the nonprofits that had started in the world, um, the HIV world. Uh -huh. So I was like, um, so there's not a lot of jobs because I only know of three. And so once I went, like yesterday, we did something for you equals you. And I met an executive producer. So he's like, hey, we want you to come speak. We want you to come do this. So I think I just have to get out more and like mm -hmm. show my face some more. Yeah. Um, cause you have to network to get work. Totally. But, but basically my job is just front desk. It's just some extra cash for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing too serious. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Do you feel that there is, um, a difference? Well, you wouldn't know cause you didn't get it from sex, but do you feel like there's sort of a difference between those who are born with it and those who get it through sex? As oh far as yeah. I get okay. that all the time. <laughs> um, most men like, okay, you got, you got it through your mom. You didn't get it through having sex. I'm like, no, but like there is a dispel myth about, well, there is a, a myth about being converted to being through um, getting through your mom or getting through sex. And I just know that I just get that like, oh yeah, you got it from your mom. It's not a big deal. But it's like, it's just, I don't know. It's just a virus. And I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. You, do you feel like that you're, you're sort of have like a little bit, like you're more forgiven maybe <laughs> like there's more like empathy. Cause they're like, oh damn, oh, like yeah. you couldn't even help this. Yeah. It's like empathy because I was born infected and, and like, they're like, oh, you didn't do nothing. Um, it's a virus that God gave you, but um, you can dispel it by talking about the goodness and you can help people and you're trying to help people. That's what you're doing. But when, if you got it from sex, it's like, oh my God, you did something wrong. You're a horrible person. And yeah. like, no, they just had sex. Right. Yeah. And obviously, you know, lots of people in the HIV community that got it from sex. So you're, you know, like right. that whole side of it. I would say that at a point in time, there was like, I was a person who contracted it from getting through my mom. So I would say that there was some dispel myth or like, oh, we're not going to talk about the HIV infected the girl that was born um, HIV infected, we're gonna focus on people who contracted it from the virus. So I would say that wave hit my length. Um, mm -hmm. They wanted to focus on people who got it more from sex than people who were born with the virus. So I would say that affected my career, but that was like years ago. Oh, gotcha, okay. Cause they wanted to get the kind of well, they're both very interesting stories, regardless of how you get it. I mean, my gosh, you, you were born into this world with something that you couldn't help. What is your medication? Now you're asking me technical questions. Um, <laughs> Tivacay, I take Tivacay and Simtuza. 
the two pills. Yeah. And then, it, so it's just two drugs, basically. You don't do the three mm -hmm. drug regimen. So, and no. you're, you've been undetectable, I'm assuming. Yes. For a long time. Do you ever miss I've a day? I've been doing good. Of course. Um, yeah, I miss a day. You, but I um, are you, on it. I, I'm huh? on a two. I'm on a two dose regimen. Also, I just got my results this morning. I'm still undetectable. So they're obviously the two do the two drugs works just as well as the three. Um, are you considering Cavanuva the injection? Um, once a month. It's once a freaking month. Yeah. See, see, I say it's bad for me because my mind. I'll probably miss that month. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm gonna take that pill. It's yeah, it's a it's that kind of a, the yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Oh, I don't know. Of course, obviously, pain. It's just shot in the ass. But yeah, because you do have to go to the clinic and have it done by an MA or the doctor or whatever. So it's like a time out of your schedule. Go. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. I know in the UK they're doing it every other month because the medication actually is good like it holds up through two months. I talked to my doctor about this the other day and she said, so it's for them, it's more cost effective because they're not doing it every month. So she goes, they are, I guess maybe more people are in care there. So they feel like they can, because you really, you have to, you have to be, you have to go. If you don't, then you're going to be possibly detectable again. So I know that the rates of being undetectable in the UK are quite high, meaning most people are who have HIV are in care and they're doing it as they should. They're taking their, tre their treatment. So maybe that's why they're finding that it's kind of like safer in the UK to go every two months, but in the US, maybe we're just not as adherent. And so they want it to be- Of course we're not. Yeah, and the UK campaign, I mean, I found out, you know, the 400,000 um, that are not, so in the U.S., 1.2 million are infected with HIV and 400,000 of those, um, you know, some obviously don't know they have it, but 400,000 of those uh, are, not un are not undetectable for so many reasons, you know, so many um, tons of reasons, stigma mainly. But yeah, so that's like a new thing we're talking about. It's, uh, what did they call the, pro the um, campaign? It's J to 400K. That's what it is. It's meaning journey to 400K. Meaning we yeah, need to. Like, last to know that. That, yeah, know yeah it's, it's kind of a new thing they're talking about. And they said, you know, they're, they want to focus on those people because we want to get everybody in care and on treatment and get everybody who's HIV positive to an undetectable level because that's the best for our health. We won't spread it. Um, yeah, so there's, it's good to focus on those. Do you think we'll ever have that in the U.S.? It's just so, it's coming from so many different angles. It's hard to round it all up, like to round everybody up. I mean, there's just people are people. People are, people are having sex all the time. It continues to get spread all the time. I think it's just a really hard thing to harness, but you know, bringing awareness to it obviously is uh, the first step. So I'm glad that that's happening. Um, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I've got a shirt. I'll show you, hold on. You just okay. Have, this is my... Um, Oh, yay. Prevention is prevention, U equals U, journey to 400,000, meaning they want, you know, to get the, that number to go down because it shouldn't, it shouldn't be there. But, you know, so many reasons that I learned at one of the conferences, this term, the social determinants of health, and I, you know, had never heard that before, but there's so many reasons why people don't take medication, just as something as simple as like, they don't want anyone in their family to know, so they wouldn't want the medication even in the house, so they won't take it you know, or even comes down to just even, you know, transportation to get to a doctor. There's like so many like things that you wouldn't even think of, like, it, you know, that you'd be like, well, of course, wouldn't everybody be taking the medication? You know, but they don't, not everybody does. So it's, it's very sad, or they don't take it consistently, or, or they have mental health problems, or they're homeless. I mean, there's so many reasons why people might not be in care the way you and I are. So yeah, I'm glad that they're doing that. I'm glad they're bringing awareness to it. I will wrap this up. Is there anything you want to add that I didn't ask you or? No, you want to... I just want to, I just want to tell people, um, you get equals you as you were talking about undetectable means untransmissible. So get tested, know your status. Um, yeah. that's the biggest compel and have a conversation, have a conversation with your kids, have a conversation mm -hmm. with your friends, have a conversation. You know, so many times we're with our girls and, you know, she's cheated on and we say, oh, he's no good. He's a dog. But you have to follow up with that. Well, are you going to get an HIV test? 
because your life is like in seriously danger. We don't think about those things. We think about the emotions, but we have to think about the logic about our bodies. So get tested, know your status. And um, that's all I have to say. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Hydea. I appreciate you doing this so very much. And you just, again, you're just glowing. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, you have a wonderful day. Okay. Okay. Bye, girl. Bye. Bye.